Hello and welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from Central Florida. Today I'll be taking you along with me while I perform some much needed plant chores. I'll be working with plants in LECA as well as soil. Sometimes life happens and I'm just not able to get around to my plant chores in a timely manner. Such is the case with this Raphidophora tetrasperma as well as several of my other plants. So let's get to the plant chores. I'm going to start with these Gendapsis pictus exotica cuttings. I took these cuttings a few months ago, probably about three months ago. I put them in some sphagnum moss and placed them in my grow tent where they have been all of this time. I can tell they've grown quite a lot, so I am sure they are well rooted. As you can see here, they are definitely rooted and overdue for planting. Usually you don't want your roots to get too mature before you repot them into whatever medium you're going to use. So today, I figure better now than never, I'm going to separate some of, this, um, some of these cuttings and I think I'm gonna plant them in soil. With a couple of light tugs, I can tell that this plant has a pretty extensive root system. So my goal here is to free the plant from the sphagnum moss and clean off the roots as much as possible without damaging the roots. Now, these roots ended up being so, so developed, so well developed and so many of them that I'm not real worried about getting every single piece of sphagnum moss off of this plant. It should be just fine. So now I wanna transfer it over to a mixture of soil, perlite, and orchid bark. And I will be mounting it to a moss pole using um, floral tape that I was able to find at Dollar Tree. First, I'm going to figure out my desired positioning of the plant, and then I'm just going to use the floral tape to tie the plant to the um, moss pole. Now, there's no special science to this, and because this plant has so many roots up and down um, the stem, some of these roots are gonna end up out of the soil because there is such an extensive root system that should not be a problem. When tying the knot, you wanna make sure that you don't do it so tight that it impedes the plant's ability to take up water or breaks off your plant. Because I'm moving this plant from a very moist environment to a medium that is drier, I do expect that this plant will decline a little bit while transitioning. It would probably not do this if I was like transitioning it to LECA since that's another water-based medium. So to help this plan adjust, what I'm going to do is I will keep the soil more moist than I normally would for this plant while it transitions. So here it is all mounted. I'm going to spread the roots out around the pot. It's looking pretty good and is now ready to be backfilled. So I'll go ahead and add the soil. I did not mix this soil specifically for this plant. It was some that I had on hand. If you've been following me for any time, you know I like to keep things simple. So most of my soil mixes are 50% um, potting soil and 50% perlite. This one has some orchid bark in it that I had left over some, from some orchids. So I went on and threw that in there as well. Plant is nice and stable. So now I'm just going to water it in. I'm not putting any fertilizer or anything in this. This is water that sat out for probably about 48 hours in my watering pitcher. And so I'm just gonna saturate the soil and I'll keep it pretty moist for the first 10 to 14 days. This is what it looks like. As you can see, some of the, the roots are above ground. That should be just fine. Um, the majority of the root system is underground, under the soil. So after being in the plant room on the rack under a grow light for three weeks, here's the plant, the Scandapsis pictus exotica, has been repotted, it has been mounted to the moss pole, it's looking rather healthy and happy, 
and um, so far all good. Next up is this Anthurium vichii, also known as the King Anthurium. I received this one as an import and it wasn't well rooted when I received it. And look at it now. I have it um, in Lekka pellets and as you can see, it now has a very nice root, si root system. So what I'm going to do with this one, I think I'm going to leave this in the LECA since it seems to be liking it so well. And also because I don't do well with Anthurium. Um, I have better luck with them when they are in LECA. So what I'll be doing today is just transferring them into a larger LECA pot. The first thing I'm going to have to do is untangle these roots and try to get them through the slits in this pot without breaking off the roots. I want to keep these roots intact as much as possible. So I'm going to take my time and see what I can do to untangle. One thing I love about growing in LECA is it's so much easier to work with, I feel, than with soil and it's definitely neater. There's so many roots in this pot and they're so tangled that it's holding the LECA in. So this is going to take me a few minutes to remove this from this pot because again, it's a nice root system. I certainly don't want to damage it, but um, you really don't want to let your plant get this far along before repotting it. Ideally, when the roots first started coming through the bottom, I would have gone on and repotted this plant, but because I'm behind on my plant chores, that didn't happen. A question I frequently get is how do I decide which plants I'm going to grow in LECA and which ones I'm going to grow in soil? It's really just a matter of, pers of personal preference. Um, I, if I have a plant that I really have issues with in terms of the watering schedule, either it doesn't line up with that of my other plants, um, I will definitely put it in LECA. A lot of times if it's plants I'm having issues with, I'll put them in LECA just to make it easy. If it's a plant I expect to grow really big, I may start off in LECA and then transfer it to soil because I want to be able to put a big moss pole in there and have it grow up and things like that. So, you know, nothing technical, just a matter of personal preference. Okay, I have a few pieces of LECA that are stuck to the roots. I'll pull those off, but otherwise the roots are looking pretty good. At this time, I will check the roots over. If I see any rotting roots or dead roots, I will remove those. It's a good, t um, a good time to also check the plant over, make sure there's no pests. Just really giving the plant a once over to make sure everything is well. Since I'm just upping the pot size on this and I am going to still be using LECA, I'm not going to worry about removing every single LECA pellet that is adhering to the roots. So now I'm just gonna go ahead figure out placement in the new pot and start backfilling with the LECA. When backfilling, the most important thing to look for in the end is that your plant is stable. If not, you may want to use a stake or something to support the plant. I'm happy that this plant is nice and stable, so now I'll just go ahead. I am using a self-watering pot with wicks at the bottom to wick the water up to the LECA. My favorite self-watering pots are the ones that have this little water meter in here. It tells you the water level and that way it's just really easy to know when you need to add water. This works too because I can just pick up the base, I mean pick up the inner pot and look in the base, but the water meter makes it a lot easier. Now the only thing left to do is to add water. Um, you can add this to the base pot or you can just pour it over the LECA pellets like I'm doing here. As long as there was water in there, this plant is ready to go. Now that the roots have room to grow, they've been cleaned up, this plant should take off. So three weeks later, this is what the plant looked like. I had it in my grow room on a rack under a grow light and it went from three leaves to four and you can see that the leaves are much larger and the little ripples in the leaves are definitely more pronounced. The plant looks nice and healthy. Next up is my Philodendron Plowmanii Citrus. It is growing in LECA and as you will notice here, 
the white deposits on the clay pellets. This is very common when you're using LECA, you're going to see it. And all it is is like salt deposits and things like that from either your water, fertilizer, and all. So it's a very easy fix, but very necessary fix. If you leave this like this and it starts building up, it can kill off your plant. So all you have to do is flush the LECA. So I just simply sit, bring mine to my bathtub in my plant room and rinse it with not cold water, but you don't want it hot. Just like try to get it so it seems like it's about room temperature and you're just rinsing and rinsing the pellets. You don't have to disturb your plant or anything like that. Just enough to flush all of the deposits out of the LECA. It's really important when deciding what you're going to put your LECA in and your plant in that you also keep in mind the fact that you're going to need to flush those pellets on occasion. So you don't want to pick something really big and heavy. Um, if you do, you might want to make sure you have a drainage hole. Look at my LECA, um, LECA video and you'll see what I mean by a drainage hole and how you use the drainage hole to flush your LECA. After three weeks, the pellets are still nice and clean, um, no deposits on them, just that simple. It's a happy plant. Moving on to this alocasia. I haven't had this plant in my collection very long. As we know, alocasias are spider mite magnets. So I've been looking at this one. I, When I brought it home, I did my normal little checks and things like that and decided to leave it in the soil and the pot that it came in. Now it's just not really growing and some of the leaves are coming in yellow. So I wanna repot this plant just to kind of troubleshoot and see if I can't figure out what's going on. I mean, it's got a nice root system. I wouldn't call this root bound, so I know that's not the problem, but there is definitely something going on with this plant that is causing it to decline rather than to thrive. The first thing I checked for was spider mites. Now I wanna make sure that the soil seems to be fresh, doesn't have an odor, don't see any evidence of any pest in the soil. So now I'm looking to make sure that it doesn't have any of those little baskets that um, the growers sometimes use for their plant plugs because that restricts the growth of the roots and a lot of time will kill your plants as well. I'm not seeing any indication of those either and um, I don't see any problem with the soil. So what I'm going to do, um, I've removed most of the old soil. It smells fresh, it looks good doesn't seem to be depleted or anything like that. So I'm going to make the decision to use the soil again. Now, like I said earlier, this plant was not root bound, so I really don't need to bump it up, but this pot that I'm going to put it in is just a hair larger than the one it's been in. And you'll notice that it is a pot that I have a wick in the bottom, which will turn this into a self-watering pot because alocasias like to stay a little bit more moist and that will require me to water more frequently than usual. Now I'm putting a mesh, a piece of mesh green in the bottom of the pot so that the soil does not fall through the drainage holes. Now I'm amending this soil that the pot, that the plant was already in. I'm adding some perlite to it as well as some orchid bark chips just to give it a little more drainage and a little more air because the soil was a little compacted and maybe that is a problem i really don't know so right now i'm just doing a little, some small trial and error things to try and correct the issues that this plant is having now that i've amended the soil with a chunkier soil mix mix it up really well and i'm ready to pot this plant Again, you wanna make sure that your plant sits deep enough in the pot that it will be stable after adding the soil. It's important to make sure that you don't leave any air pockets in the soil because these air pockets next to your root can allow your roots to dry out. To do this, I'm using the spoon to make sure that the soil falls in the little empty gap between the root ball and the side of the pot. And I like to push the soil down on the edges so that it's a little lower than the soil in the center so that the, when I'm watering, it doesn't overflow. 
Now that I'm finished potting up the plants, I can put this in the decorative outer pot. And the last thing I'm going to do is trim off this leaf that is discolored, this yellowing leaf, because it's not going to turn green again and um, it's gonna die off anyway. So here we have it. I return the plant to its original spot and after three weeks, this is what the plant looks like. The leaves are less crowded, the plant seems healthier, the stems have gotten longer, and I have no more yellowing leaves. Although I can't tell you precisely what was wrong with this plant, whatever issue it was seems to have been resolved. So one more happy plant. My final plant chore for today will be transitioning this Scandapsis Satin Jade from Lekka to Soil. I'm also going to put it on a different moss pole. Scandapsis remind me a lot of Hoyas in the sense that they shoot out this long vine and then later the leaves will emerge. So that is what has happened here. So I have this plant with this long bare vine and um, it's definitely outgrown the, um, excuse me, outgrown the pole that I had it on. So I'm gonna put it on a larger moss pole and I also want to put it in soil so that it can hold a bigger stake in the future um, because I really want to see how big I can get this plant to grow. As you can see, it's got some roots coming out of the bottom here. So it is um, a good time to be repotting this plant anyway. So the first thing I have to do is get it out of the LECA. The plant wasn't root bound or anything, so all I had to do was dump the pot, the LECA pellets fell out, and this is the root system. So what I'm gonna do first is just, if I see any rotten roots or any roots that don't look like they're viable anymore, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those off. But I started this from a two leaf cutting and it had minimal roots. I don't even think it had like one or two roots and it has done all this in the time that it's been in the hydrogen pellets. These are water roots, so a lot of these roots will die off in the transition. So the plant may decline a little bit, but it's to be expected, and the plant will eventually develop soil roots. I don't really need to put this in a large pot because it's gonna be some time before this plant develops a full root system of soil roots. Dealing with plants that are mounted, I find it easier to switch out the mounts before potting the plant. So that's what I'm gonna do here. This plant is attached using Velcro garden strips. So I just need to open the Velcro and that easy, it's unmounted. First, I need to figure out how high or low I should mount the, pl the plant onto the moss pole. And I just wanna make sure that the roots will be down in the soil. So after figuring that out, I'm just going to take some um, floral tape, tie it around the pole in the plant and just tie it off. I'm gonna continue this process until I reach either the top of the pole or the top of the plant. Because this plant has this long vine shooting off, I know I'm gonna run out of moss pole long before the plant, before I get to the top of the plant. So I'll just wrap it around. With that done, I am back filling the soil and I'm using the tip of this moisture meter to locate and fill in any air pockets that may be found in the soil. This is what the plant looks like now that I have completely transitioned it from LECA to the potting soil. And eventually I will add a moss pole to the top of this moss pole if this plant starts filling in. And if the vine doesn't start filling in with leaves eventually, what I will do is just take cuttings and root, um, root the cuttings and add them to the pot. Now what I'm doing is misting the moss pole to encourage the stem to grow roots and attach to the moss pole. Once it's attached, I'll be able to cut off the floral tape and remove it and the plant will be just fine on its own. Three weeks later, this is what the plant looks like. I'm happy to say the plant is looking really good. The leaves never went limp during transition. I did keep the soil more moist than usual just while it was transitioning from the water roots 
to soil roots. I'm sure it's still in um, some stage of transition, but I think it's safe to say it's going to be okay. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. I've gotten some of my plant chores done, and I'm going to try to do better to stay on top of things. Take care, stay well, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.